Welcome, dear friends, to a tale of a surgeon's unexpected journey that would change his life forever. Enjoy the story. Dr. Greg Thompson stared out the window of his uncle's plush office, watching the bustling streets of Chicago below. He barely registered the older man's words, his mind already drifting to the ski trip he'd planned for the weekend. Greg, are you even listening to me? Dr. Sam Thompson's sharp voice cut through his nephew's daydream. Greg turned, forcing a smile. Of course, Uncle Sam. You were saying something about a small-town hospital? Sam sighed, running a hand through his silver hair. This is serious, Greg. Pinewood General is on the brink of collapse. If it closes, that entire community loses its only medical facility within a 50-mile radius. And what does that have to do with me? Greg asked, though he had a sinking feeling he already knew the answer. I need you to go there, assess the situation, and get that hospital back on its feet, Sam said, his tone leaving no room for argument. Consider it a test. If you can turn Pinewood around, you'll prove you're ready for bigger responsibilities here. Greg's jaw clenched. He'd been angling for the position of chief of surgery at his uncle's prestigious Chicago hospital. But this, this felt like a punishment. For how long? he asked, resignation creeping into his voice. As long as it takes, Sam replied. Pack your bags, Greg. Your train leaves tomorrow morning. As the train rattled through the countryside, Greg stared out the window, his mood as gray as the passing landscape. He'd traded his designer suits for more practical attire, dark jeans, a warm sweater, and a leather jacket. But he still felt out of place, a fish about to be thrown into very unfamiliar waters. His mind drifted to the file his uncle had given him. Pinewood, population 5,000. A logging town fallen on hard times. The hospital, once the pride of the community, now operating at minimal capacity due to budget cuts and staff shortages. What have I gotten myself into? Greg muttered, closing his eyes and willing the journey to be over. Hours later, Greg stepped off the train into a cold, drizzling rain. The platform was nearly deserted, save for an old man dozing on a bench and a stray dog sniffing around a trash can. Welcome to Pinewood, Greg sighed, pulling his jacket tighter around him. He spotted a battered yellow taxi idling nearby and hurried towards it, eager to escape the dismal weather. The driver, a grizzled man in his sixties, eyed Greg skeptically as he slid into the back seat. You lost, mister? We don't get many tourists round these parts. Greg forced a smile. Not a tourist. I'm Dr. Thompson. I'm here about the hospital. The driver's eyebrows shot up. No kidding? Name's Mike. Whole town's been talking about you coming. Didn't expect such a young fella, though. As Mike navigated the rain-slicked streets, he filled Greg in on the town gossip. The mayor was fighting to keep the hospital open, but funds were tight. Most of the experienced staff had left for better-paying jobs in the city. Folks around here are scared, Doc, Mike said, his eyes meeting Greg's in the rearview mirror. That hospital closes, and this town might as well roll up the sidewalks and call it quits. Greg nodded, the weight of his task settling heavily on his shoulders. I'll do what I can, Mike, but I can't promise miracles. The taxi pulled up to a dingy apartment building, its faded brick exterior a testament to better days long past. Greg eyed it warily. This can't be right, he muttered, double-checking the address his uncle had given him. Mike chuckled. Welcome to Pinewood Luxury Living, Doc. Town ain't exactly rolling in dough these days. Greg sighed, reaching for his wallet. As he paid the fare, an idea struck him. Hey, Mike, you seem to know everyone in town. Think you could track down some of the hospital's former staff? I'd make it worth your while. Mike's eyes lit up at the prospect. Sure thing, Doc. I'll see what I can dig up. As Greg watched the taxi drive away, he turned to face his new home, stealing himself for what he might find inside. The apartment was even worse than Greg had imagined. Peeling wallpaper, a musty smell that hinted at mold, and furniture that had seen better days decades ago. He dropped his bags with a groan, pulling out his phone to call Mike. Hey, it's Dr. Thompson. Listen, is there anywhere else I could stay? A hotel, maybe? Mike's laughter crackled through the speaker. Hotel? Doc, you're lucky to have a roof over your head. But hold on, I might know someone who could help. 
Give me an hour. True to his word, Mike returned in less than an hour, this time leading Greg to a charming Victorian house on a quiet street lined with maple trees. Mrs. Anna Edwards, Mike announced, knocking on the door. Former town librarian, sweetest lady you'll ever meet, and she's got a spare room she sometimes rents out. The door opened to reveal a petite woman in her seventies, her silver hair neatly coiffed and a kind smile lighting up her face. Michael, what a pleasant surprise. And who's this handsome young man? Mike made the introductions, explaining Greg's situation. Mrs. Edwards clucked sympathetically. Oh, you poor dear. Of course you can stay here. Come in, come in. I'll put on some tea. As Greg followed Mrs. Edwards into the house, a strange sense of deja vu washed over him. Something about this place, this town, felt oddly familiar. But that was impossible. He'd never been to Pinewood before. Had he? The next morning, Greg stood before the doors of Pinewood General, taking in the faded paint and cracked windows. Inside, a skeleton crew of staff awaited him, their faces a mixture of hope and skepticism. Good morning, everyone, Greg began, his voice echoing in the nearly empty lobby. I'm Dr. Greg Thompson. I'm here to help get this hospital back on its feet, but I can't do it alone. I need each and every one of you to give it your all. Can I count on you? A murmur of assent rippled through the small crowd. Greg nodded, a small smile tugging at his lips. All right then, let's get to work. The days that followed were a blur of activity. Greg interviewed former staff members, pored over budgets, and worked tirelessly to bring the hospital's equipment up to date. Slowly but surely, Pinewood General began to show signs of life. Two weeks into his stay, Greg called a staff meeting. The atmosphere in the room was markedly different from his first day. There was an energy, a sense of cautious optimism. You've all done an incredible job, Greg said, looking around at the assembled faces. We've made real progress, but the hardest part is still ahead of us. We need to prove to this community that Pinewood General is here to stay, that they can count on us when they need us most. As if on cue, the door burst open. A young secretary, her face pale with panic, rushed in. Dr. Thompson, there's been an accident. A little girl badly hurt. They're bringing her in now. Greg's training kicked in instantly. Prep or two, he barked, already moving towards the door. I want a full trauma team ready in five minutes. As he scrubbed in, Greg's mind raced. This was it, the moment that could make or break Pinewood General's future. He took a deep breath, centering himself. He could do this. He had to. The girl was wheeled in, her small body dwarfed by the gurney. As Greg approached, he felt his breath catch in his throat. There was something about her face, even battered and bruised as it was, something hauntingly familiar, but there was no time to dwell on it. Greg pushed the thought aside, focusing on the task at hand. All right, people, let's save this little girl's life. The surgery was grueling, a five-hour marathon that pushed Greg and his team to their limits. But as he made the final suture, he knew they'd done it. The girl would live. Exhausted but elated, Greg made his way to the waiting room. A woman sat there, her face buried in her hands. As Greg approached, she looked up, and the world seemed to tilt on its axis. Eva? Greg whispered, his voice barely audible. The woman's eyes widened in recognition, then filled with tears. Greg, is that really you? Memories flooded back. A summer ten years ago, a whirlwind romance cut short by his return to medical school. Eva, how could he have forgotten? Your daughter, Greg said, his mind reeling. She's going to be okay. The surgery was successful. Eva's sob of relief was cut short by a sharp intake of breath. Greg, she said, her voice trembling. There's something you need to know. Daisy, she's not just my daughter. She's yours, too. The world seemed to stop. Greg staggered back, gripping the wall for support. What? How? How is that possible? Ava's eyes were pleading. Remember that last night before you left? We were careful, but... Nine months later, Daisy was born. I tried to find you, but you'd changed your number, moved away. I didn't know what to do. Greg's mind was a whirlwind of emotions. Shock, disbelief, anger, and underneath it all, a surge of protectiveness for the little girl he'd just saved. His daughter. I need, 
I need some air, he muttered, stumbling towards the exit. He found himself on the hospital roof, the cool night air clearing his head. How had his life changed so dramatically in just a few short weeks? He'd come to Pinewood expecting a simple job, a stepping stone to greater things. Instead, he'd found a town that needed him, a daughter he never knew he had, and... Ava. The door creaked open behind him. Greg turned to see Mrs. Edwards, her kind face creased with concern. Michael told me what happened, she said softly. Are you all right, dear? Greg laughed, a hollow sound. All right? I don't even know what that means anymore. I have a daughter, Mrs. Edwards, a ten-year-old daughter I never knew existed. Mrs. Edwards nodded, moving to stand beside him. Life has a way of surprising us, doesn't it? The question is, what are you going to do now? Greg ran a hand through his hair, his mind racing. I don't know. I can't just abandon them, can I? But my life, my career, it's all in Chicago. Mrs. Edwards placed a gentle hand on his arm. Gregory, let me tell you something. I've lived in this town my whole life. I've seen people come and go, chasing dreams of bigger and better things. But the ones who find true happiness, they're the ones who realize that sometimes the biggest adventures happen in the smallest places. Greg looked out over the town, its lights twinkling in the darkness. For the first time, he saw Pinewood not as a backwater assignment, but as a place of possibility, a place where he could make a real difference. I need to talk to Eva, he said finally. And I need to meet my daughter. The next month passed in a blur of activity. Greg threw himself into his work at the hospital with renewed vigor, determined to make Pinewood General a facility the town could be proud of. But his biggest challenge, and his greatest joy, was getting to know Daisy. She was a spirited child, with Greg's dark hair and Eva's bright smile. As she recovered from her injuries, Greg spent every spare moment by her bedside, reading her stories and playing games. Slowly but surely, a bond began to form between father and daughter. Eva, for her part, was cautiously optimistic about Greg's presence in their lives. I don't expect anything from you, she told him one evening as they shared a quiet dinner in the hospital cafeteria. I know this is a lot to take in. Greg reached across the table, taking her hand. Ava, I missed out on ten years of Daisy's life. I don't want to miss another day. I know it won't be easy, but I want to be here. For both of you. As the weeks turned into a month, Greg found himself falling into a rhythm. Mornings at the hospital, afternoons with Daisy as she regained her strength, evenings spent talking with Ava, rekindling the connection they'd shared all those years ago. And through it all, Pinewood General began to thrive. Word spread of the miraculous surgery that had saved young Daisy Thompson's life. People started to believe in their hospital again. It was a crisp fall morning when Greg's phone rang, his uncle's name flashing on the screen. Greg, how are things going there? Any progress? Greg looked out his office window, watching as an ambulance pulled up, its lights flashing. A team of nurses, many of whom he'd personally trained, rushed out to meet it, moving with confident efficiency. Things are good, Uncle Sam, Greg replied, a smile in his voice. Really good, actually. Excellent, Sam said. Then I think it's time we discussed your return to Chicago. I've got a position all lined up for you, chief of surgery, just like you wanted. Greg's heart skipped a beat. A month ago, those words would have filled him with excitement. Now, now they filled him with a sense of loss. Uncle Sam, he said slowly, I appreciate the offer, but I think I'm going to stay in Pinewood. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Stay? Greg, are you feeling all right? This was supposed to be a temporary assignment, remember? Greg chuckled. I know, but things have changed. I've changed. This town, this hospital, they need me, and I need them. As he ended the call, promising to explain everything to his uncle in person soon, Greg felt a weight lift from his shoulders. For the first time in his life, he wasn't chasing after the next big thing. He'd found something real, something meaningful. A knock at his door pulled Greg from his thoughts. Eva stood there, Daisy by her side, both of them smiling. Ready for lunch, Dad? Daisy asked, 
the word still new and wonderful on her tongue. Greg's heart swelled with love. He stood, grabbing his coat. You bet, sweetheart. Let's go. As they walked out of the hospital together, Greg caught sight of their reflection in the glass doors. A family, his family, and beyond them, the town of Pinewood. No longer a punishment, but a promise of a future filled with purpose and love. Greg Thompson had come to save a hospital. Instead, he'd found a home. 